The anamnesis of the runner starts with the determination of the knee axis position. Rotating the foot outwards makes the medial tibial plateau easier to feel. The height of the medial tibial plateau is now measured from the floor. Since no shoe is used for the 3S80, the height of the running shoe must be measured and taken into account as well. We take the medial tibial plateau plus 20 millimeters. For the anamnesis of the socket flexion, the user lies down on the cot. He pulls his bended knee towards himself slowly with minimal force. The technician feels the trochanter and marks the middle of the femur. The technician then places his hand, palm down, under the user's pelvis. With his other hand, he moves the residual limb carefully into extension. When the pelvis begins to rise, the hip flexion angle of the residual limb is measured in this position. For the alignment of the prosthesis, it is advisable to use and combine components from the manufacturer exclusively. At the beginning, it is necessary to check whether the joint is locked with a small lever on the outside. The positioning of the alignment reference point to the alignment reference line is zero millimeters at the knee. The knee joint is aligned with external rotation of up to five degrees. The foot is aligned without physiological external rotation. The foot reference point is marked on the sole. It lies exactly on the alignment reference line for advanced runners and is shifted by 40 millimeters for beginners. The hip rotation point lies exactly on the alignment reference line. The flexion of the socket corresponds to the measured hip flexion angle plus four to six degrees extra flexion. All connections must be tightened with the corresponding torque. This prevents accidents and avoids damage to the material. For the user's first standing exercise with the prosthesis, it is necessary to ensure that the joint is locked and the user is standing by parallel bars. At the beginning, the technician stands behind the user in order to prevent a fall. The user maintains his balance, the load is placed on the prosthesis, and the residual limb is extended. If the prosthesis length is adjusted correctly, the pelvis is balanced. The goal of the prosthesis length check is to determine the physiological leg length, whereby the prosthesis can be up to three centimeters longer than the contralateral leg in order to compensate for the spring deflection in the stance phase and minimize the risk of stumbling. The leg length difference determined with the distance boards is readjusted with the help of the test adapter. For this purpose, the user sits on a chair. The screws of the spring are loosened and must be opened completely. The spring is now shifted by the difference determined and retightened with 15 Newton meters. The stiffness is also checked at parallel bars. The joint is locked and the technician stands behind the user. During the exercise, it is necessary to ensure that the pelvis is always straight. If the user has a firm footing, he can begin hip movements. On the basis of the hip position, the technician can tell whether the stiffness of the spring is optimal for the user. The carbon spring foot is available in six stiffness variants corresponding to the body weight of the user. It is necessary to continuously ensure that the user has firm footing. In the image on the left, the stiffness is good and the movement is energetic and comfortable. In the image on the right, the motions are rough and the stiffness is too high. The length of the spring and the position of the borehole must be marked before shortening. The spring is removed from the prosthesis solution. The relevant occupational safety measures must be taken for sawing and grinding carbon fibers. It is advisable to saw slowly and use the entire length of the saw. Any burrs that arise should be ground away. The spring is now reattached and tightened with the corresponding torque.
The exact physiological prosthesis length can be determined with the laser posture. The user now stands with both legs on the device. If the prosthesis length is correct, the load line of the laser is projected onto the spine. The user now changes position and stands with only the prosthesis side on the force sensing platform. The prosthesis should be loaded with 35 to 45 percent of the body weight. The laser line must run through the middle of the foot, the knee joint, and the anterior superior iliac spine. The sagittal plane is now checked. Note, the reverse displacement of the knee axis is greater than 80 millimeters for beginners and is 80 millimeters for advanced users. At the start of the exercise, the user stands between the parallel bars. The knee joint is locked. To practice handling the prosthesis, the user first practices jumping up and down in place. A consistent rhythm should be maintained. The jumping motion must come from the hip. The order of the jumps can vary, e.g. landing simultaneously on both legs or alternating them. The user now practices jumping with forward propulsion. The joint remains locked. The jumping motion comes from the hip. It is necessary to pay attention to posture and sufficient hip extension in the process. As a general rule, the user controls the prosthesis, not the other way around. The next exercise serves to improve the control of the prosthesis. The user jumps forwards on the prosthesis side. At a specified point, the user rotates around his axis in a jumping motion and then continues his forward motion. A sufficient support possibility is important for this exercise. If all exercises have been practiced sufficiently, the prosthesis can be unlocked for the first time. The prosthesis solution must be loaded on the forefoot with firm footing and the residual limb must be extended. The lock can now be released with the small lever on the knee joint. The flexion and extension damping can be adjusted with the small screws on the side of the joint. To do so, the small caps are opened and the damping is adjusted with a corresponding wrench. The direction of rotation is marked next to the screw. It is advisable to start with the flexion damping at maximum and set the extension to the minimum. The user should wear protective pads. The final setting of the damping is optimized according to body weight stride length, and running behavior. After each adjustment step, it is necessary to check whether the hydraulic damping is noticeable. In the next exercise, the user turns left and right around his own axis. Here as well, he stands between parallel bars with the joint unlocked. It is necessary to ensure strong hip extension at all times. The rotations are now performed in both directions with jumps. These exercises serve to train prosthesis coordination. In this exercise, the user moves forwards with the prosthesis unlocked for the first time. The primary goal here is to learn braking and stopping from the motion. The motion must always be stopped with the healthy leg, never the prosthesis side, since otherwise there is a risk of falling. The following exercise should help the user learn how to use the energy stored in the spring in an efficient way and convert it into propulsion. The joint is free and the user jumps forwards from leg to leg in alternation, thus simulating a running situation. The supports can now be reduced according to the abilities of the user. The user now walks as independently as possible along the bars with the knee unlocked. Once he masters this, he can start running. The technician directs the focus to rapid hip activity. The user should learn to estimate and use the stored energy. The user next practices switching to running from walking. Ideally, the speed should be increased so a natural running motion results. Note once again, never stop on the prosthesis side. The user now practices moving from jumping on alternating sides to running. The user should be encouraged again to take large steps. 
Only in this way can the walking cycle come closest to a running situation. If the user can run independently, it is time to check and optimize the dynamic alignment of the prosthesis. The motion with the prosthesis should be even, and the entire surface of the foot should have contact with the floor. Under load, the foot must stand at a 90 degree angle. The swing phase should have a consistent rhythm. It is necessary to get feedback from the user for the optimal adjustment of the damping resistance values. Please proceed with caution, since even minimal adjustments can have significant effects. The user can now practice running outside. Here as well, it is necessary to support the user at the beginning. An all-weather running track is optimal as a soft and level surface. At the beginning, take recurring breaks and slowly build up the routine. If the user has learned to handle the prosthesis safely by this point, the prosthesis solution can now be checked and optimized again. It is necessary to check whether an appropriate step rhythm exists and a correct stride length occurs. The hip potential of the runner should be fully exploited. The entire surface of the foot must touch the ground. Since real forces operate on the spring, it is necessary to check again whether the flexibility of the spring is appropriate. Practicing safe stopping is essential. This should be practiced repeatedly.